Yire Shaimase, and welcome to my channel focusing on language and culture, broadcasting to you from Itoshima, Japan. Today, I would like to focus on two questions. The first, how can I learn the language quickly? Second, what are the hacks or shortcuts? Spoiler alert, there are no real shortcuts. And I think of hacks as simply being ways to make your learning more efficient and more effective. I dislike using the term hack in this context. It feels like you're being violent towards my beloved languages, chop, chop, chopping them up. The truth is foreign language learning requires time, discipline, consistency, and sustained effort. And hopefully you have passion too. So in this video, let's take a look at some of the strategies I have used and some of the habits I have developed over the past 50 years studying more than 40 languages. Hopefully you can benefit from my experiences and insights. First, let's talk about setting goals. It's best to begin with a good understanding of the goals that you have for learning a particular language or languages. Choose your languages based on your major goals. I often feel I want to learn almost every language I encounter. Unfortunately, that is not possible. And I usually select and prioritize my target languages based on when, where, and how I have or will have the opportunity to use these languages. For example, my journey to become a polyglot began in earnest in 1975-1976 when I was studying at Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, Colombia. At the university, I was studying Latin American literature and political science. But at the same time, I studied French at Alliance Francaise, Portuguese at Instituto Brasileiro de Línguas, and German at the Goethe Institute. So what were the major goals for these three languages? I chose French to prepare for studying international relations the following year, 1977, in Geneva, Switzerland. Thus, it took priority over Portuguese and German in terms of time and effort. I quickly learned the basics at Alliance Francaise and at home using a linguaphone set. It had a textbook and small vinyl records for audio. Very ancient technology from today's perspective. Thereafter, I went to the library to read Le Monde Diplomatique, a magazine in French focusing on international relations. In the case of Portuguese, I plan to go down the Amazon and travel all around Brazil and other countries in South America for six months before going to Switzerland. I wanted not only to be able to communicate in Portuguese, but also read literature as I was studying Latin American literature at the university. I found literature a great way to improve my ability in languages. That was possible since Portuguese and Spanish are very similar. I wound up reading all the novels of Jorge Amado, a renowned Brazilian novelist best known for his vibrant storytelling focused on the people and the culture of his native Bahia, Brazil. For German, I just wanted to develop a general knowledge and understanding. So, besides my classes at the Goethe Institute, I also studied German with a linguaphone set. After determining our major goals, we set daily minor goals for daily study. These daily study goals, one, help us with motivation. Because when we have a clear idea of what we want to achieve in a series of study sessions, we are more likely to stay motivated and continue studying. And two, they facilitate planning. We can break down these goals into smaller manageable steps and create a study plan that will help us achieve them. Every day in Colombia, I had a specific time allocated for each language. I would decide how much of the textbook I had to finish before even having a sip of tea. I really learned discipline at that time. These goals also provide a sense of accomplishment when we achieve them. This helps us with our confidence and keeps us motivated to continue learning. These goals also make us more effective in tracking our progress. We can measure the progress against the goals and adjust our study plan accordingly. So that leads us to the importance of creating a daily routine. Spending a little time each day studying is much more effective than spending the same amount of time crammed in a few hours in one day. So creating a daily routine 
is vital for several reasons. First of all, consistent engagement with the language enhances retention and recall. I've noticed when too much time passes between study intervals, I have to spend more time reviewing and I have less time to make progress with new material. Next, a routine encourages discipline and provides structure. It is a great way to reduce procrastination and ensure steady progress. If you tend to be lazy and put off things for mañana, then it can work wonders. I have a study partner who now loves to be disciplined and looks forward to daily study. Furthermore, daily exposure helps in developing language fluency faster. The constant repetition aids in imprinting the language in your brain. The next question is what to learn in terms of vocabulary and phrases. One good strategy is to learn the most 1,000 common words. It provides a quick path to speaking fluently about many common topics. Studies have shown that the 1,000 most common words account for 80% of all language conversations. Focus on these words first to quickly increase your comprehension and build confidence. Be sure to learn these words in the context of example sentences. Next, we can concentrate on vocabulary and phrases most useful to us. Here, usefulness is defined by the goals and reasons you are learning the language. For example, I love to trek in the Himalayas. So besides learning Nepali and Tibetan, I wanted to learn Tamang, a Tibetan related language widely spoken in Nepal, about 5% of the population, and parts of Northeast India in Sikkim and Darjeeling. Due to lack of learning materials, I had to be creative. So I had a Tamang student of mine at my university here in Japan help me make a phrase book geared towards trekking. So not only did it have the normal greetings and introducing yourself, but also the words that I would use while trekking. I was recently trekking in Nepal and the reaction I get when I speak Tamang is just simply amazing. People are flabbergasted. Another excellent strategic method is to write a narrative about yourself and have a tutor check the phrases. You can usually do this with using AI, Google Translate, Depot, etc. if you're studying a common language. Memorizing a narrative about yourself and how to ask related questions is a great way to sound fluent at an early stage. It helps build confidence and people are more likely to treat you as a competent speaker of the language and they will not simplify their speech. I hate it when people speak to you in an unnatural, supposedly simplified, but often ungrammatical way because they think it's easier for you to understand. It robs you of the opportunity to get natural, comprehensible input. The next important study habit is listening and repeating, also known as shadowing when you repeat while listening without pauses. It helps you to, one, improve your pronunciation, two, develop listening skills by listening carefully to what you hear and repeating it, you can develop better listening skills and you're more attuned to the nuances of the language. Next, it helps you build vocabulary and grammar knowledge. By shadowing, you reinforce and remember new vocabulary and the grammatical patterns you have learned, which can help you use them correctly in your own speech. It helps you increase fluency by improving your ability to speak more quickly and naturally. It helps you gain confidence by practicing speaking in a controlled environment. It helps you mimic native speakers better, their pronunciation, intonation, and prosody, which makes you sound more natural and people understand you better when you speak the language. Get comprehensible input through reading and listening. The best way to do this is to use dual language books that are also available as audiobooks. I love this method so much that my goal is to translate my memoir, A Life in 30 Languages, in dozens of languages and offer them as dual language books or dual language readers with audio format available. That makes it possible to get much more interesting, comprehensible input. Date per la prima volta da una radio a onde corte. 
no matter what your level is in the language. Next, immerse yourself. If possible, spend time in the country where the language is spoken. If you can't travel, then you can create an immersion environment at home. And we can also communicate with people around the world in our target language through language exchange or having language classes. Don't forget to focus on the fun part. Make your learning enjoyable. Read books, watch movies, and listen to songs in the languages that you're learning. For me, music has played a very important role in my language learning, especially in languages such as Spanish, Brazilian Portuguese, Italian, Croatian, Polish, Norwegian, Chinese, Thai, Japanese, Indonesian, and more recently, Nepali. So if you want to learn a language quickly, then study every day with a well-developed plan and a lot of passion. You can hack the language as much as you want, but it still takes time and effort. Thank you for listening.